Okay, this one is working with the linear timecode uh, audio reader and uh, just a couple things real quick. Uh, I'm using the LTC, uh, this plugin, audio capture. I'm also using uh, media framework utilities, uh, media IO framework. And then I also have done the time data monitor. It's not necessary in this case, but it, it is open and it will be the way that uh, we'll kind of deal with uh, syncing in the future. We won't need this time code provider, but um, just so you know which plugins I'm using. So what uh, what I kind of, you know, I assume you're gonna have an audio track or a video, perhaps in this case that, you know, has um, a time code track that's associated with it. So that will always kind of start at the same time relative to that. Um, I don't have this, uh, you know, set up right now to do that. So just to kind of uh, represent that, I have I have this new uh, LTC Audio uh, iPhone app that is just literally, I'm just coming out of the bottom of it, converting it to audio on a line in. Uh, and you can hear that it's coming into my PC. So all that's great. So that's kind of what uh, I'll be using just to simulate this uh, this idea here. So when um, I'm going to use the media profiles, and the, re the reason for this is when you have the LTC Audio plugin uh, kind of set as your timecode provider, and it's not running, you'll the audio is not running. You'll notice it kind of bounces around uh, somewhat randomly. Um, if I hit play on it, it locks on fine and it does you know what you think it would do um, but as soon as I stop it is going to uh, kind of revert back to the same behavior and this wouldn't be real good if I was trying to just do some quick edits on a timeline so it's nice to be able to just bounce to a default profile do some things and then go back uh, so normally if you weren't using media profiles you'd have to go in here uh, go to your general settings and pick something in here, right? And this isn't necessarily that convenient or um, easy to change. So uh, that's one of the reasons we'll use the media profiles. Um, and it's just kind of a little nicer way to do this because then I can literally just set them up however I want and not have to keep going back to the project settings. So to set these up, uh, the first, like I said, the first time when you come in, uh, it'll look like this. So it'll uh, you'll want to create a new one. It'll pick the type for you, and then you'll say where you want it to be. Let's do new. It's fine. And the first time you do this, you're probably going to get a red box here that says you haven't configured any proxies. Um, that's okay. You can just configure them really quickly. We're not going to use them. The only section we really want in this case is this time code provider, right? And so I'm going to uh, show you how I created these, but really, I'm just uh, I'm really only using these two. This one I. I I was just kind of messing around with. So the way you would actually do this is you go blueprint class, type in timecode, and you pick your system one. And I'm going to create a system one and an audio one, so that way I can swap back and forth, right? So when I create the system one, it looks just like this. When you open it up, you'll get these settings over here. You can just pick your frame rate. I'm using 30. You guys might be using 25 or 24. It just depends. And that's all I really need. Uh, if you need to do frame delay or something like that, you can add it in here. Um, but it's uh, I'm just going to use it as flat 30 for my system one. Then for the audio one, uh, it's the same process. So go in here, type in time code, audio capture. So I'm going to call this one audio. And in here you have slightly different options. The detect frame rate, I feel like <laughs> occasionally is wrong. So I just set it here. Again, this uh, uh, audio plugin seems to be kind of, uh, it hasn't been touched in quite some time and it's not, it's definitely not, I would say like the best way to do this. I would prefer to use uh, an Aja card uh, and go in on the reference pin, but in a pinch this does technically work. Um, so I'm gonna leave this one on detect and just kind of see what it does and we can kind of experiment with that. So in order to set these two up, my default one, all I did was I said override project settings and I picked the time code provider that I want. So that's my system one. Fine, that's good. And then my LTC audio one, I picked my audio one. Um, I'll create another one just you know for the heck of it so we can uh, swap to that, uh, that other one. I'll just call this uh, auto 
detect, right? And so if I use this one, same thing, override, pick the audio one, so then it's gonna have auto, auto detect here, right? And we'll see kind of what it does. So it should be saying flat 30 if I am using the auto detect media profile, which I am, we'll go in and it usually reads 29 <laughs> for some reason, that's what I've noticed. So that's one of the main reasons I don't uh, use the auto detect and I just specify it outright and then it seems to work just fine. So that's the part of setting up the time code uh, that we wanna use. Next one, we go to the take recorder. Um, so I'm just gonna like throw this cube in here. And so what I'd recommend is give yourself maybe like 10 seconds of padding, right? So when you're setting up your video track or your audio, your um, like actual source audio, have like 10 seconds of time code run first because since this number is bouncing around, you don't really want to record that uh, in take recorder. I'd recommend you do play on your, uh, you know, video and time code track together first and then start recording here. So if I hit play, kind of wait for it to get going, hit record, and then once it starts, you know, it counts down, now it's going. So actually if I just grab this cube and drag it across and stop, I should be able to go back and look at this and see what it's doing. So it shows my cube and right, not exactly what, uh, what I was hoping for, but it's, uh, uh, it looks like it's going a little faster. Um, but uh, that's at least the basic idea um, here. So if I wanted to go back and watch this like in time with it, so let's do another take of this and I'll try and do it a little bit slower. Um, so if I go, again, I'm gonna hit play first, wait for this to be evaluating, it's good. I hit play going three two one all right we're good we're plotting and i'll just kind of just try and smoothly drag it across here all right let me stop I'll get this thing we'll go back we'll watch it and see kind of what we get nice right exactly kind of what i was thinking it goes kind of slowly you know <laughs> it even has my little stutter in there which is great so uh, to play this back though with time code so you could evaluate it, um, these are read only, so they're not gonna let you actually change this. If you try and change this, it's just going to uh, bounce back. So in the same way that you've been doing things uh, previously, um, you will have to put them into another level sequence, like uh, I just happen to have one right here. And so if I grab this content browser and I do um, let's just say it was that second one, and I drag this in. Like now I have this uh, this other track in here that I can actually use um, if I wanted to uh, kind of play it back correctly. So let me actually grab um, the third one. That's the one that I was actually kind of liked a little bit better. Uh, takes, let's grab that third one pop it in here okay cool so then I would want to you know time it up right so that it's where it should be and that's what I want to get so if I set this to clock sources tick it's just going to you know do what it normally would do but if I set this to clock sources time code it's actually going to do whatever this incoming time code value is so if I are um, hit play first this is coming in then I hit play here, it's gonna jump to the section that matches what's going on, uh, which is usually you know, what I would want when I'm reviewing this. So I, I'm having a little bit of a, um, a uh, length problem here. <laughs> so that's why it stopped. But again, if I hit play on my device first and hit play here, the playhead jumps and it's gonna kind of follow across the way it's going. Now, what I was saying is, for whatever reason, when it's reading the time code coming in and trying to chase on this timeline, it doesn't do, it doesn't seem to evaluate going across these particularly smoothly. Um, that isn't actually how it is, so to speak, um, but um, it's just a result of the way that it's playing back with this uh, this time code setting here. If you were using an actual Ajdar card, like it would just be completely smooth. Um, but since we're using this audio um, waveform 
kind of reader, it's not the smoothest thing. So, But what you'll also notice is if I was trying to do this and I hit play, it's just going to do nothing because it's just bouncing around. And this is exactly why I want to have this media profile so I can say, all right, now I want to just kind of review this. I just hit play. I kind of watch it. Uh, right now, I'm uh, actually, since it's set to time code, um, you know, I would need to set it to tick or something like that. Uh, and then it'll be fine. I can watch this, you know, at the frame rate that I'm doing. And everything should, in theory, like line up that way. Um, so hopefully this explains a little bit of the process on this. Again, if I was using um, an Aja card um, with the reference pin, uh, what I mean, I could do the exact same thing. I actually have just basically just a you know, iPhone to audio, audio to BNC, and then I can hook that up and do it the same way, and it works just fine. Um, and then I won't have this problem on playback, but at least I'm record, like um, it seems to plot the keyframes um, just fine um, along here. And it's definitely, you know, good enough that if I'm, if I'm just hitting play um, on that, uh, on that sequence, you know, and I'm, and I'm using tick, like when it plays back, you know, you don't really notice anything that I wasn't doing with the mouse, right? It's still the same way as if I had, uh, um, just recorded it because that's actually how the keyframes are. You could also turn off keyframe reduction or do whatever you want to try and kind of smooth this stuff out. Um, but that's in general um, how that should work. Um, again, I it's not 100% uh, bulletproof doing it with this method. It's definitely better if you're using um, the capture cards, if you're using uh, Blackmagic or uh, other Audra cards, not the Kona 5 that don't have a dedicated reference pin, you do have to have your time code embedded in the uh, video itself. Um, so for that kind of a thing, um, you know, usually you're going through a camera, so you'd be running your time code through the camera or there's some sort of master clock to do this, so it would already just be in the stream for you. Um, but I know obviously in your case it's slightly different. So hopefully this helps a little bit. Um, with what you're doing. Uh, so if you want to kind of check what's going on, if you hear it's that time code, you look here, it'll tell you what you're uh, synchronized to. So right now it's BP system, you know, but uh, in, in the case that audio is coming in, uh, you know, I would want it to be synced to the other one. And then this will, uh, you know, if I plug in my phone back in and hit play, you know, it'll do the same thing, and this will let you know, hey, you're you're synchronized to that source that's coming in. And again, it's it's coming in fine, and it seems to plot fine. It's just more when you're playing back. I'm not like, entirely sure why, and I, I don't know if it's just because the way this evaluates, it's only evaluating hard frames, and it's not going like smoothly across them. Um, I don't really have a great answer for that, um, but it's. Uh, it seems to be fine on the record side. So hopefully this will help with what you're doing to make sure that your records are gonna be um, exact every time that you do them for the different sets of lights. Um, because otherwise, you know, if you're just relying on system time or, or something like that, any small hitch that the engine has is going to um, possibly throw it off. So I, I don't think that would be a reliable way to do it. Um, I would think that this would be better, but it would definitely be worth, um, you know, doing a few tests, I think, to see uh, and just make sure that when you play it back here, you know, um, you're getting a smooth playback as well. So hopefully that helps and we'll talk soon.